Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today we're going to be doing some more Kikimura action in the Rogue Drone sites. We are going to try a slightly blingier fit than I used before. This is a DPS fit, a very like high DPS fit. And I think that this is pretty much the highest DPS you would realistically be able to get on a Kikimura without like absolutely stupidly insane bling. But I mean, we've got 184 million fit right here. We're not using any resist modules. We're just using this one Corelli A-type small armor repair. I'm not using any implants, just an FYI. Uh, the thing is here, we're just amping up this Corelli A-type small armor repair with this auxiliary nanopump, nanobot accelerator, and the auxiliary nanopump too as well over here. Now, uh, the thought behind this is just that in the Rogue Drone sites, you find a lot of different types of incoming damage types. So I was thinking you could maybe put a resist module, something like that, resist this or that. But I think there's, there's so many different resist types. I just wanted to use rigs that affect every resist type. So these auxiliary nanopumps and nanobot accelerators, instead of them affecting our resist, they just affect the amount of HP we get. So it's effective to all different types of resist types. And we are then going to also announce the winners of the previous skin giveaway. This is for then the Raven Scope Syndication skin. This one right here. Three winners, Sergeant Carrot, Vary Thora, Thanina, and Nick Praskaton. You guys are all going to get your very own Raven Scope Syndication skin gifted to you in due time. But don't worry if you did not win this giveaway. There's going to be another one in this video right here, in fact. So leave a comment down below with your in-game name. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, this is going to then be for the Vedmax Scopes Indication skin. This one right here. This is a skin I actually recently got access to. I'm going to be giving away three of these guys in this video right here. So make sure you leave your in-game name so you can be eligible to be in the giveaway. All right, so let's get into this. This is also nice because this fit like it doesn't use implants and it also is a little bit like more cap stable than the previous one I used with two armor repairs. I think it's got it's got slightly less HP per second, but I think it'll be just about right. And we'll also do a lot more damage as well, which is very favorable. So we'll look here in the encounters and the combat sites to see if we can find some more uh, combat sites that these rogue drawn outgrowth colonies. Hopefully we can find some. No, there are not many here. Let's see if we can find at least one before downtime because downtime is in 17 minutes so it's a little bit time constricted right here i'm now using this black fire steel skin right here because we're using a little bit more blingier kikimoras i think it's appropriate to put a cooler skin on it uh before i was using no skin i was just thinking okay we're using the scrub fit kikimora now we're using the little bit more uh professional kikimora so now that we're going to look professional as well with this black fire steel skin I think overall these skins look really cool on the Triglavian ships. Only one thing I would have liked is that if maybe they could have a way to like tone down the orange parts. But I mean, that's just me personally. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the orange. I like the silver and the black, but I don't really like the orange a lot. It's personal preference. Another skin that I think is really cool is this Kybernaut Clade skin right here. It looks really cool because it's got like red everywhere. So I think it matches very well, this like these red highlights. But I think it's, that skin is uh, a little bit expensive costs i think 250 plex so I, that wouldn't be something i would want to use for that i don't use a kikimura a whole lot so that's why i'm a little bit uh, hesitant on using too much plex on skins but this skin right here the black fire steel skins overall they're very cheap uh, they like because this one cost here only 55 plex so i mean only only but i mean compared to other skins it is quite cheap uh, the uh, other skin i think is looks really good is ikitursa this ship right here with the black fire steel. Oof, I think this looks really cool with the Nurgle too. Leshak also looks pretty cool. You can get skins from these rogue drone sites. You can get these like Wiryakomi skins. I think it's a pretty interesting thing to see that you can get these like special skins that don't usually exist in the new Eden Saw from these sites. All right, we'll go to this rogue drone outgrowth colony. Let's see how it goes because I'm quite curious. Let's see now, just if the these sinks, they affect damage or rate of fire or both. Rate of fire, damage modifier, okay. So we get more damage and rate of fire. That's a very good thing because if we have more damage, then we'll be able to one-shot these things a little bit easier, like what more damage per shot, like the damage modifier. Because I don't think we need more. I mean, rate of fire is obviously good, but I'm thinking that for the purpose of like these kind of sites, last time with two damage modules, I was able to almost one-shot, one-shot a lot of stuff, but so many ships I was almost able to one-shot. So here, this third damage module is probably going to make it so that I pretty much one-shot everything. So I look forward to that. Is the acceleration gate opened? Nope. Okay, there's another Kikimura here. So there's going to be a little bit of competition going on right here. He could be a little bit better if he uses the Velez Entropic uh, Disintegrator. It's a tiny bit more damage than this one, but it's not a whole lot more. Like, it's very little damage increase that you get from the Velez one. So 
Uh, I'm just using the tech two here. I'm still not going crazy like a stupid bling unnecessary because you can bling your ships obviously, but sometimes it's just that you can bling, but it's not like you get much out of that bling. And I don't want to do that if I can help it because obviously gankers are a thing in EVE Online. Don't want to bling your ship if people are just going to try to pop you or hunt you when you're using crazily expensive stuff. Mystic, like look at this mystic. It's so crazy how good range we get with this thing right here. We get some nice damage increase as well. It would have been cool if I had like the surgical strike uh, implant that gives me even more damage. But I don't have that. I would have, I think I have a clone that has that, but I've not got it in right now. I've not got any implants that affect my current uh, ship stats apart from a capacity implant. That's what I've got. Let's lock up all these guys. We'll get this side uh, done quick. I wonder how it's going to go with the competition right here. Because, I mean, there's another Kikimura. Wouldn't be surprised if he's also got like very uh, good skills, very good modules, high DPS. So it'll be interesting to see here. Because I think the Dragoon in some ways has the benefit of like competition than the Kikimura. Because if you put like artillery cannons or something like that, or miss light missiles, you'll do a lot of alpha. And you just, the boss dies very quickly. So if you just get a lot of DPS done quickly, I feel, I feel like you're usually able to, uh, you know, win the competitions, especially if there are multiple people there. Because. You just need that one volley pretty much and then every, if there are multiple people then it will usually just die straight away. But uh, this is also another cool thing about the Kikimura is the, the way we can just switch ammo types instantly like we can with uh, you know Amar ships. You can just sw switch them instantly, it's really cool. It's a little bit OP I think in some ways as well because very unfortunate for Galente and Minmata people who have to wait a long time to be able to reload their ammunition, especially missile based weapons as well. I mean, you can't have everything. There are benefits downsides to many weapon systems in this game. Pretty pop. We are going to get some popcorn going on. <laughs> the Kikimura is a popcorn machine. Popcorn maker. I should even name it this. Give me a popcorn maker. Pop all these guys. Like The thing that is good about the Kikimura is that the tracking is good, the range is good, and the DPS is pretty decent. Um, one thing that is not so good with it when you have multiple enemies like this, like for example when you're doing high sec exploration, that kind of stuff, is that you, you have only one turret. So sometimes if you launch your stuff, you might, you know, it might, it's not going to be optimal if you just have one turret. You usually want to have multiple turrets so you can one shot multiple things. Like when I'm using a Confessor, for example, to do these high sec like, combat anomalies, it's nice because you can group up the lasers into two groups and you can maybe one shot two enemies at the same time. So it's really good in that regard. Let's see, now we're going to actually have to use some tank. Our, our arm repair is actually going to have to do something. Unlike before where it just basically did nothing. I wonder if the boss spawns in at the same location or it just is a little bit random where it spawns in. Because I feel like sometimes it's a little bit far away. Sometimes it's not. It may be just depending on where... Um, I place my ship. I feel like it's a little bit more forward than the spawn in point. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. He's getting some wrecks, but he was obviously here before us or after us, so he's gonna obviously have less wrecks than us. Colony Nest Salvager. Scavenger, not Salvager. It's not Rex, okay. We're gonna keep an eye for the boss. We're gonna overheat this to 400 DPS. A lot of DPS we've got going on right here. Ooh, Kikimura looks spicy. It looks aggressive in its appearance. This is a really cool view, actually. Let's see now. I've got some NPCs over here. Usually after the second wave, that's when the boss comes in. So we just need to destroy this wave. And then we'll get the boss to spawn in soon. Locky -lock, lock. Lockity lock. And a pop. I feel like always just the, the second wave, the NPCs, they have a bit more HP. Don't one-shot them as much as in the first room. It could also just be that we're getting bad hits as well. Like penetrating shots, that kind of stuff. It seems to always be one shot in them. And we wrecked. And wrecked. And wrecked. Yeah, this this ship is an absolute beast. Really powerful, this Kikimura is. There he is. Shoot, 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 shoot. And he is spawning straight away. Oh, I think we lost that competition. Oh, we won. Oh, we won. I didn't expect us to win that. It went like so... He spawned in so suddenly. Hardly any loot, though. Only 5 million. Ah, it's just the way it is. We'll duck up here, just repair our gun. We didn't actually take any damage. 
So that's really cool. Oh, we don't even need to repair our gun. We took, we took no damage. So that's really great. We can go and look for some more sites. Can maybe look, go through this route I've made here to Ian Orista. Jump through here. Let's see if we can do one more site before downtime. It'll be interesting to see if we can get enough time to do a last one before downtime. Oh, there's one here, Perimeter. Let's go. I think it might be taken though, because Perimeter is a very populated system. Always going to be people there, right, being ready to get it at a moment's notice. Uh, it might be also favorable for us because we'll be able to do the site quicker before downtime. We'll see. And claim this reward. Jump into Perimeter. Yeah, I, I doubt we will be able to get to it, but we'll try. We'll try. It's so little time before downtime, so I can imagine a lot more people are going to like log out compared to usually. Like, the maybe people who are preemptively logging out. Rogue drone outgrowth colony. No, it's not even here. Ha! <laughs> like, it just disappeared that quickly. Okay, escalation, combat anomalies. Rogue drone in Ian Orsta. Let's go there. Go, go, go. Kikimura fast. Fast, Kikimura. <laughs> oh. I can imagine all the people who are here doing that one are just swarming to this one as well because they probably see it as well on the like the scanner like I'm doing now. You see there's one here that was just like done. I think it goes that like, you could see it on the overview when it's done, but you can't see it on the probe scanner when it's done. So we're going to go and see if we can get the one in Ian or stuff. What kind of ships do you guys use for these events? I'm curious because I've used the Dragoon so far and the Kikimura as you can see now. I think I feel like the Dragoon is one of my favorite ships for PvE as if I was to do a destroyer because you've got so many low slots so you can actually fit a decent amount of tank and DPS. Unfortunately with the Algos it's good because you can get some decent like damage but the thing is you can it's hard to get a good range because I don't think you could put missiles on it then also oh there's no one even here and then also on the Algos it's got like only three low slots so it's hard to fit a lot of tank there. The Dragoon is really nice because it's got, I think, three mid slots and four low slots. So it's got a bit more slots than the than the Algos, actually. But I, it's my preferred type of ship for PvE. I use it in Abyss as well from time to time. Well, I recommend people to use it because it works really well. I don't know if we'll be able to do this last site before downtime because it seems like this is like not so much time left. But we'll see if we can maybe blitz through this speed run. We're going to do a speed run right here. Speed run of the Rogue Drone site. The Kikimora. <laughs> Speedy speed. Oh, we need to activate our armor power. What am I doing, silly me? We need to lock up stuff up quickly. Keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. We're going to move slowly so we don't go out of range of the uh, occult. So we always got the high DPS ammunition in range. Use as quick as possible. I feel like I'm doing the Abyss right now with a bit of like a speed run style where I've, I'm working against the clock where I've got a limited amount of time to kill stuff really quickly. Oh. Yeah, we just destroyed Blitz through this first wave. I think a second wave, halfway through the second wave is where you open the acceleration gate, something like that. So there won't be much time until this thing opens. Blap this guy with the bit of Mystic. He's going out of range. Pop. Okay, I'll go with Occult. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Lock, 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 lock. lock. Lockity lock, lockity lock, lockity lock. Come on, lock up, please. Shoot everything that we can shoot. There's in range because some of these guys are a little bit out of range. There we go. Able to almost one shot these guys. Unfortunately, still not. Many of them are still not getting one shotted. I can imagine it would have been helping if it would have helped if I had like a implant or something like that. But it's just about one shot. It's a bit unfortunate, but it's the way it is. Just about one shot. Blap, blap, blap. Four minutes left. Oof. Four minutes left on the clock. I don't know if we'll be able to do this. I do not know if we'll be able to do this before downtime. We'll see. We will see. Blap. Kikimura. Come on, Kikimura. You can do this before downtime. I believe in you. <laughs> there we go. They're all in range. That's great. All in range of occult, which is 15 kilometer range. We're going to stop here so that we don't drift out of range of these guys because they're not going that fast. 400 meters a second. Pop. Okay, a third wave then we have to do to be able to get to the next room. Come on, come on, spawn in. Two minutes, 50 seconds. We only have to destroy a few of these guys here. Only just to destroy a few of these guys and then we'll be able to get into the next room. Come on. 
just need to destroy a few more. A few more, come on. Are there any triggers, maybe? Oh, there we go. Opened. Let's go. Insta warp. Nice, nice, nice. Insta warp. Three minutes or two minutes and 15 seconds. Oof. I don't know if we'll be able to do this. I do not know if we'll be able to do this. Obliterate these rogue drones. Come on. Fast. Fast, fast, fast. A rogue drone killing spree right here. One minute and a half minute left. I think that's what it was. Kikimura really furious right here. I'm going crazy on these rogue drones. If we were to go back to the abyss and the, we had to encounter rogue drones, they'd probably deploy all their battleships on us because they would know how big of a threat we are. <laughs> all those rogue drone battle crews who really like to annihilate you. Colony Nest Sentinels, the destroyers right here. Yeah, I think we'll get good shots on the destroyers because they're bigger, so we'll get, we'll get glancing off right there. If we get a lot of penetrating shots, it'll be good. Come on. Is this wave we have to destroy? There's coming to come a new wave now. One minute, nine seconds. Oh, it's going to come close. I have a feeling we won't be able to do it, but it can come close if we're really fast with this next wave. If we're really fast with this next wave, we might be able to do it. Come on, spawn in. What is it? What are they waiting for? Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Shoot, 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 shoot. Shoot, shoot the ones that we can actually shoot, shoot straight away. <laughs> Lock up, please. Yeah, some of them are not in range, but it's all right. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Ah, this is going to become tight. It's going to be very... Time is going to become very close here. One minute left on the clock. Half a minute left probably now. Blap, blap, blap. Come on. Blap faster, Kikimura. Blap faster. Might even be worth to have like a gunnery implant so you can get a bit of like faster rate of fire instead. Because it would be just better to get through these cycles since we anyway, many times we don't one-shot them. So at least you go to the next target a bit quicker. Shoot, please. How much time is left? Where's the... Four seconds. Ah, we missed it. We're not going to get this, it seems. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. It's already there. Play fire. Fire everything. Come on. There we go. Overheat as well. Because maybe downtime will have it keep going. And we can even bookmark the wreck here when it's destroyed. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! We bookmarked it, we bookmarked it. So might it be here after downtime? Come on. Come on. Get close to it, we need to use our after. Ah. But I think we'll see here. If we will get it after downtime, like we'll be able to get back to the wreck because we bookmarked that wreck right there. So <laughs> that was really close. The, the boss keeps coming in like so subtly. It's not that he comes in so like really subtle when it comes in i could not notice where it is uh, i'll quit here and we'll see if we can get the wreck after downtime Connecting. all right so we're going to log back in right now to see if we've got that wreck right there downtime has just passed by it was so cool because we just about had enough time because um i feel like when the downtime occurs there's still a few seconds you've got to spare after downtime time has ended so let's see now. We do not see it anywhere here. Oh no. The wreck's not here. Ah, oh, that's sad. But there's another one here. So we can go and do that. <laughs> let's do that. It's unfortunate. I thought it would be there. Wouldn't Rex still be there? They have like a time of like, I think three hours or something until they despawn. Oh, well, it's the way it is. <laughs> it was my fault for trying to do this so close to downtime. But it was fun to see at least that we were able to like blitz through it really quickly. It was uh, very fun to see how effective we were at doing that site. Any people in local? Any people nearby? Nah, we're the first person here. Man, the Kiki, it looks so cool. Like, when I was little, a little boy, a little uh, child, I used to play this spaceship game because I spaceship games have been a big part of my life. That's why one of the reasons I like EVE Online. Uh, I used to play this Star Trek game and it's called Star Trek Shattered Universe. You can Google that. Um, it is a game that basically is in the Star Trek universe, but instead of focusing on the like, you know, big ships like the Enterprise and these kind of like sort of, you could say, capital class ships, it instead focuses on these little fighters. And it's very unique because in Star Trek, like, is a, it's a, it's a sci-fi franchise like uh, Star Wars, but it's a St Star Trek at least. Many people know this, but 
for you guys who don't know it focuses a lot on these like big ships usually and the thing is that was very unique because it was like for the first time ever you got to see like these fighters and many people didn't like it because that game focused on fighters which is something they've never seen in typical like star trek lore but i thought it was actually really cool because that was the first like ever introduction i had to star trek at all so for me that was like what was always seen as like that is star trek to me and it's just uh, funny because one of the ships that i like to play a lot more one of my favorite ships i think in that game it looks a bit like the kikimura it looks quite a bit like the kikimura it has like these two extended parts here with like a middle part with engines here looks uh, quite similar to it and i can show you guys what i mean you can just head towards this acceleration gate this is the game right here you can see you're in these little fighters this is the ship that was one of my favorite ships you can see it looks it looks a bit like the Kikimori has got like these two side parts and they got like a middle piece here. This one right here. You choose these laser beams from these laser banks over here. <laughs> Good memories in that game. Unfortunately, it was, uh, I, I was like looking back at it like after, like it's like this, I'm talking when I was maybe like, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years old. I played that game. It was a very long time ago. And now I look back at it and I looked at like the reviews and everyone was saying it was really bad, really bad. I used like an emulator. You can use like an emulator to like play old games on old consoles. And I found a PlayStation 2 emulator you could emulate the game on. I still thought it was fun. It was reliving my childhood. <laughs> I'm sort of doing that again in EVE Online by playing really cool spaceship games. All right glad that a game like EVE Online exists because it's got almost everything I would have wanted in a spaceship game. The only thing that EVE Online doesn't have that I would have wanted to have in a spaceship game is more like ship customization. Like I would have liked to have more ability to customize the look on my ship because for me, when I play games, usually I like to have stuff that looks cool. It sounds a bit childish, but I like to have stuff that looks cool. I wish we could have more skins. And I also wish, just generally speaking, we could customize the look of our ship more. Like maybe even have model packs, like special models for your ship to make it look slightly more personalized, not like everything else in the game. But that obviously requires work from CCP. So I don't think that's the that's the reason why we don't have that kind of stuff. <laughs> a lot of work, in fact. But I, I wish that's really the only thing I, that I miss in EVE Online. I think that it would be nice if we could have more customization options so that's why usually if a ship i think it looks good then it's just the way it's always looked it just happens to be that a ship was designed a way that makes me look good i think the kikimori looks decent me personally i think the gila probably is one of my favorite looking ships apocalypse paladin uh rattlesnake as well uh, those are probably my favorite looking ships in the game yeah these little frigates right here stand no chance i just i'm so pissed off that that wreck we did not get it if you guys know how the mechanics work for like downtime and wrecks and downtime, how they work, let me know. Because I thought that there was like a two, three hour window when you've got a wreck that it like will still exist in space. But I'm guessing that downtime like resets that time or something because it's quite weird. There's certain things that occur in downtime, certain things that don't. Like, for example, a mission, for example, it will reset and it will exist. It will like have the... Wait, why am I not moving? Come on. Oh, we were scrammed, that's why. <laughs> uh, the, like a mission, if I'm in the middle of a mission and I do it in downtime, then uh, it, like in the mid-mission downtime occurs. You can even see uh, like a previous video. I think it was when I was doing a marshal in the, using a marshal in the Angel Extravaganza mission. Um, uh, the downtime occurred mid-mission and what it did was it reset the mission. So it made it so that the whole mission respawned again. So I could actually farm the mission over again which is a bit annoying because i wanted to do the mission quickly but at the same time it was good because i got a lot of the loot as well again so i'm i'm wondering if this is what happened here is that this rogue drone outgrowth here it just respawned because we saw we had one in the same system straight away it's not usually that easy to come by these sites right here though i feel like they nowadays they are uh, all like these like not when i say nowadays i mean like these recent like two three days i feel like they're easier to come by because i've noticed that compared to like day one when this event came out, there were a lot better loot. I'm getting like five, six million isk worth of loot. It's not that great loot. Um, here, like in the beginning, I remember I almost always got at least 30 million or 20, 30 million from each uh, boss. Now I feel like it's a lot less. So I don't know if they've like nerfed it or something. So I'm guessing that because of that, if it, if it did now get nerfed, it could just be that I'm unlucky. But if it did get nerfed, then that could be why I'm finding more because less people are farming them. And But it could also be that they just made it so that the spawn rate is more and the loot is less. And that's simply the way it is. <laughs> All right. 
grab this guy here. Last one. Okay, so now it seems like the second wave, halfway through the second wave, that's when the boss spawns. Wrap through these guys. You see how the Kikimori it changes its like appearance when you start shooting. So if I were to stop shooting, it will just make all these wing parts be less like extruded. It's a bit it feels a bit like almost like a transformer, this ship right here. Changes appearance based on its activity. It's a bit like that with the I think the Eden Com ships are a bit like that as well. Maybe they're not. At least when they're warping, they, they like mix around their appearances on their ship. But many ships do that, like Gila as well. It's wing parts fall downwards. Alright, so I think any second now the boss will enter. Because there's a second wave. Usually on a second wave, that's when the boss comes in. There he is. Look, he just entered just like that. He's always so subtle when he enters. He's very subtle, this guy is here. See that? Our, our HP went down pretty quickly. He has got a pretty decent amount of DPS, this boss over here. What is his damage type from this guy? He went down very quickly, though. Colony Overseer, he's Omni Damage, so it's not like anything particular. Oh, look at that. Like, there's a weird light there. I think that's an explosion from his ship. There's a glitching out. Oh, 18 million. That's nice. Pyrolancia, that's why we got a bit of Isk right there, because it's Pyrolancia. Hmm. This ship right here is pretty cool because I put a core probe launch on so we can actually do some exploration if we want to do as well. I might even do that sometime because Kikimura is quite popular among a lot of people to use as a like combat exploration platform just because of how good application it has and range. So it's good against like this small stuff. But yeah, that was a bit of rogue drone hunting. This is, uh, I like this event. It's very basic, very easy to come by and very good for new bros to do. I, I'm kind of looking forward to though that we see more of these like battleship sized events. I think it's really nice that we have a bit of variation because in the past it was always that like we had the these like live events. The best thing was just to take the biggest and baddest ship you could take like a rattlesnake, etc., and just go and blast the boss and you know get, win the get the loot that way. But now we've been getting a lot of ones that involve smaller ships, and I really like that because it opens it up to new players and makes it a bit more like varied. You know, you can do a little bit more like varied types of activities. So I like that we're getting different types of events. But now we've been going for a long time uh, by just using small ships like destroyers and this kind of stuff. So I think I look forward to now being again able to take my rattlesnake into these events, or maybe even a marauder because I don't think I've even used a marauder in these like certain live events because they got buffed before the last or after the last like uh, live event that involved battleships i think that would be pretty cool something that would be really cool is that you know with these events you have two sites so you have one that is like this one right here that is made for like destroyers frigates then you have another one that's made for like big ships like battleships and that kind of stuff so you have some for new players some for uh for the more you know veteran players so it'll be pretty cool i think you know sort of giving the new players their own little safe space to do stuff in will be without being or less likely to be interfered by all these like really high skilled players i don't know i think it'll be cool with some variation anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video right here i'm just blasting away at this uh this uh, fortress just to see my kikimori and it's always glory in the extended shooting position if you did enjoy the video please leave a like and subscribe i'll catch you guys later